Don't quit. Don't you dare quit on yourself. Keep going. Who cares what they think? Your time is now. It's your life. Are you ready to break through? This is Breaking Through with Tori Hunt. Hey, what's up? What's good? <laughs> What's up, my podcast friends? It is your girl, Tori Hart, here today. And together, we are breaking through. And y'all already know, today and every day that we come together and we celebrate the folks like me and you and you who are finally coming into their own, who are stepping up and stepping out of their comfort zone to be free of all things that weigh us down and hold us back. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 where y'all at today? I, was, I was like well where is this guy <laughs> <laughs> all right listen y'all because believe me we all know how hard it can be to have a breakthrough okay so that is why we're doing this show for every day we want people to have this special breakthrough and today on breaking through we have an amazing guest who i feel like she has gone through i mean a tremendous amount of breakthrough and and in not front of in, our eyes right yeah. right in yeah, front of absolutely. our eyes and also in private i'm sure um but i just first of all let me just say i just admire her so much um mm -hmm. i didn't watch the real housewives of potomac i i did not watch it until maybe i did her podcast she asked me to be on a guest and i just fell in love with her instantly i was like mm -hmm. oh i like this girl yes. let me go and watch so, y'all, I binge watched all five seasons of Housewives of Potomac mm. literally in probably a week and a half. <laughs> I mean, I would be up till four in the morning like, okay, I got to see what's happening I next. remember you calling me right, like, I would call, like, why you ain't tell me about Potomac? I'm I was like, like right, girl, why? Late. No, first of all, I was like, how did <laughs> I not know about this? Five seasons in, honey. <laughs> what, what I like about the show is what you see is what you get. So when, when you meet our special guest, her personality is just like it is on the show. Yes. So she's an open She's book. real. Yeah, there's no, she there's no is, change up. It's yeah. what you see is what you get. She's and that's so genuine. real. So right. real. But right. but before we before I just introduce her real quick, I just want to say once again, thanks for my brothers from another mother being with me here today. Thank you for having us. Yes, Thank Melvin and Memphis. You. I love y'all. We love you too. Oh. And without further ado, I think we need to just go ahead and, and bring on this superstar. Cause let me tell y'all, she's on the rise. And um, y'all better be looking out for this lady. Because if I like somebody, I'm hard on people. But when I like somebody, <laughs> let me tell you, um, it's going to happen. I know it. Okay? Mm -hmm. I know it. I know it's going to happen. Let's give it up for the entrepreneur, the wife, the mom, the philanthropist, the beautiful, talented. And I just found out she does hair, too. Okay? <laughs> give it up, y'all, for Miss Monique Samuels. <laughs> AKA Hazel. <laughs> That's <my> intro. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. You are welcome. Monique, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here with us. Oh my God. I'm amazing. I feel really good. I feel like I am a free person. Yes. I feel like things have been lifted off of me. All <laughs> <laughs> so stress free and happy. I am great. Nice. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Tori. No, well, you you look amazing, girl. So if if a weight has been lifted, let me tell you, you can definitely see that ain't no weight on you at all. Okay. You made me fall in love with the color yellow. As a, yes. As a fashion stylist, that color is very hard to work with, but you slayed that reunion from top to bottom. You look oh amazing. And you made me appreciate my edges because I'm going to grow them back <laughs> <laughs> next weekend. Grow them back and then I'm going to snatch it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I love a good snatch. Right, right. Or a good drag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, listen, I want to, first of all, I want to ask you, okay, being in, in the, first of all, congratulations on all the success that you've been having and, and being one of the housewives, because we, we all know that the housewives franchise, that is a big deal. So I know you had came in on the second season and when you came on, it was just like, okay, it, it lit up. Like first season was cool. It was, it kept my interest. But when you came on there, you bought this new energy and just, first of all, can we talk about your fashion sense? Yeah. I mean, oh. can, can we just say like, they, 
you you bought it every episode with your fashion. I was like, what's she going to wear today? What is she going to wear this week? And then at the reunion, when you had the, the last reunion, the fifth season, when you had that yellow dress on, I was like, okay, body banging, dress, I mean, popping. Like, did you design that yourself or did you, like, did somebody make that for you or did you buy it off the rack? That You know what I'm trying to say, Melvin. Yeah. You the fashion guy. <laughs> it was just bad. It was just bad. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much. That dress was designed and made by hand by one of my good friends, Riley Knox. Riley Knox is actually the number one Beyonce impersonator in the world. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. Very talented. Very. And she designed, and I mean, to the T. She came over and did the fittings. I mean, the dress fit like a glove. It was mm. definitely like her best work. She actually designed also all of my outfits that I did for my my drag queens video, which yeah. I'm okay. Sure but I do want to let you know that that's all Riley Knox. She's nice. amazing. Oh okay. well, well Shout tell, out to Riley Knox. yeah, and tell uh, Melvin. We you love and you, Riley. Riley. Yeah, you, you and need Riley to need up. to hook up. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> Melvin he, Melvin is actually my stylist yeah. too. I do. Um, Yes, Ooh. Melvin's my. That, that's how we met. We met in Atlanta um, when I was doing the show Atlanta X's at a fashion event. Yeah, we met at a fashion event in the mall, and you know he was kind of looking me up and down at first, and yeah, I was, I was like, looking who like is this girl, and I'm looking like who is this nigga? <laughs> <laughs> who is this little lady bumping into me? <laughs> Girl, who are you? And then <laughs> right. We just start talking, and from there it was like boom. Right, like we right. Just... We found out we both were from Philly. Yeah. Which getting to that too, I know you're from the tri-state area, yeah. so you are yeah. a Jersey girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's oh probably why else I connect with you, Monique, because I was born in Philadelphia, but I moved to Jersey when I was nine years old, so I kind of have a Philly Jersey background too. Mm -hmm. But you grew up in Pleasantville. I grew up in Pleasantville, started out in Atlantic City, grew up in Pleasantville, but I was in Philly for shopping. You know, that's what we right, always that's where right. You go, right. go shopping. Yeah, so I, we were always in Philly. That We feel like growing up South Jersey, we're more Philly than we are South Jersey. We right. represent the Eagles. Like we were that type right. of okay. in my area. So yes. Yeah, yeah I used to go there every summer to Pleasantville. My Aunt Helen lived there. And I really? would go, yeah, it wasn't. A fun town, but you know, <laughs> but definitely, and and she worked in Atlantic City, so we would always go to Atlantic City. So if you came to Pleasantville, I'm just curious what part, because Pleasantville is like this big. It's very small. I don't know. She's saying y'all may I, have the same auntie. I just remember her apartment complex, and we may were near some train tracks or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I wonder, yeah. But every okay. summer, I used to come to Pleasantville. Yes. Oh my God. That is such a, that's a coincidence. I mean, Pleasantville, not many people know Pleasantville. Pleasantville. That's why I always have to say Atlantic City. Right. Right. Like, oh. right. We know Atlantic City. I'll be honest. I didn't know Pleasantville, mm. yes. but yeah. I mean, but I know it now. <laughs> so, so Monique, before we get to the meat of things, uh, <laughs> Why are you talking in the sexy voice? She got a husband. She got a husband, Memphis. <laughs> that is definitely That's his sexy voice. You don't never talk all. like this, Monique. He, I know he got a crush on you, but uh, Memphis, she's married. No, okay? no, no. I, I, I ain't tripping To a man that. that made it to the NFL. <laughs> Listen, just before we get to the meat of things, Monique, what, what even uh, led you or inspired you to even be on the reality show? Like, what inspired you? What did it start from the beginning from it? What, what, what you know, inspired you? My husband, actually. Nice. He is a person who, I swear, he speaks things into existence. Ooh. And when the show first started promoting it on TV for Bravo, my husband was like, Potomac? That's right down the street. He said, oh, you're going to be on that show one day. I could see it. And every time we watch the show, from the first season, he'd be like, oh yeah, you could totally be on this show. You could do this. And I'm like, nah, I don't think so. We're very private people. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really see myself doing that. When the opportunity presented itself, he actually was the one encouraging me and pushing me. And he said, this will be a great platform for your parents and company. So he was like, I wow. think you should do it. And then he also said, you can restart your music career if that's what you want to do. And he said, this will boost your platform so you can do those things that you've been wanting to do. And he's wow. been on the back burner because of us being married and having our kids and all of that. So my husband encouraged me and I'm, I'm glad he did. It was, it was a good experience for the most part. Nice. Wow. See, and that's, and that's on the flip side. Usually it's the wife that's encouraging the husband or building the husband up. So for your husband, that's just, just a sign of a real man for him to say, you know what? I want to 
boost my wife's career up. I want to encourage her to do this. I want to encourage her to do that. And so that's very motivational. That's a breakthrough within himself. Yes, that is a huge breakthrough. Can we get some breakthrough noise? That's yeah. a breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Chris. See, that's why I wanted him to pop in because I admire you guys' relationship so much. Let me tell you, like, I saw the love there between the two of you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, he had your back. When I saw him on TV not care that he cried, yeah. that right there shows exactly who he is and in, in, in the support system that she has. I don't yes. know if you've seen it. I don't know. But, mm -hmm. I mean, that gave me chills. So, I just was like, dang, maybe... One day I'll get that again. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I had to have some breakthroughs in me, too, in order to get mm -hmm. to that next level. So I know that you yourself, even on the show, um, you had a major breakthrough. You know, yeah. the fact that you came. I mean, you had several major breakthroughs on the show. One was you even extending an apology. Mm -hmm. And to be able to go and apologize to somebody who... In my opinion, you know, not saying anything bad about her, but I do feel like she was kind of egging you on a lot. She provoked. She, she provoked. provoked. Yeah. And and nothing against her. It's the show, you know, but she definitely provoked. And I always, I worked with Love and Hip Hop for season one through five of Atlanta, and I know how production works. Right. So I always wondered, like, if, if, if it's the same setup, like when you get to set, do you already know what you're walking into or the producer's like, okay, this is what this scene is about. And then you just walk in and do the scene. How does that even work? Honestly, our show, I have to be completely 100. With our show, it's not scripted. It's not planned. It's not, it's very genuine. The only thing, if anything, they'll encourage, say for instance, if Karen and I filmed a scene and we had a discussion about something in particular, so the only thing they may do is encourage you, oh, make sure you share with the group what you and Karen talked about. But a lot of times, other cast members are going to ask you the questions anyway. Like, oh. oh, what's going on? Right. And after you're on the show for so many years, you know that that's cute. So let me tell them about what I've been right. doing behind the scenes that they weren't available for a scene for or they don't know what's going on so that it translates from one scene to the next. But nobody's encouraged to argue. Nobody's encouraged to push. If that happens, it's never happened to me. Nobody has ever came to me and told me, oh, you need to go into this scene and turn up. Like, I've never had that happen. And maybe that's because they already know I'm zero to 100 anyway. <laughs> right. So they don't have to prep me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who else yes, know you zero queen. to 100. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you who else know that uh, Miss Candace Boyd. Like I don't. I don't really know the the love and hip hop to be scripted. I just know that oh, I know right, that right. when they get to the scene, they have no idea what they're filming. It's Ooh, always yes. a surprise. So that's that, absolutely right. Yeah, that's so, absolutely right. Okay. And I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it as if they were scripted. Yeah. But I, I think that some women on our show they think they're following a script. And that's why you have situations that transpire that get out of hand because they think that they're acting while people like me, I'm not acting. I'm being who I am right. all the time. Right. So if you get close to me or if you're yeah. in my personal space and I ask you to back up, it's because I feel that you're too close and you need to back up and the cameras are not going to protect you. No. I don't see, you know, you sh turning up for camera versus real life. I just see what it is. What it is, you know, exactly. Right. Right. How did you feel about how Andy handled that situation? I personally love Andy Cohen, right? Yeah. But I did feel, I never felt off put by him. But for this reunion, I did feel they bullied he you. was on one side. I felt he did not have any concern with you being provoked so many times. Like if somebody keeps pressing Poking your the buttons, <laughs> And then they're in your face and doing all right. of that. Like, yeah, there's drinking involved. There's all these things, cameras in your face. Like, how do you feel that how Andy responded to that situation? I definitely feel that the response was unequal. Yeah, There mm -hmm. was so much heat in my direction, but it wasn't evenly distributed to all of the other people who were a part of that whole moment really blowing up and becoming what it did. Right. And even at the reunion, I mean, out of the 11 hours of filming, there was a strong seven where I felt all the weight was on me. I mean, I was asked questions from, do you vaccinate your kids to, 
I mean, why did you name your business not for lazy mom? It was like the nitpicking that was done. A lot of it obviously wasn't shown, but I mean, the press was on me nonstop to even people asking, um, why haven't we seen your kids this much on the season this season? And I'm like, that's because production chose not to show it. My kids filmed just as much as my parent did, but they chose to show the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> T'Challa. T'Challa. <laughs> and so, and yeah. was it your idea to do the burn book? Oh, see, to me, Which that was, was genius. Being prepared. Yeah. I wasn't looking at it as... Honestly, it became a lot bigger than what I even thought it was. Well, it was fabulous. Right. If you go into my office, I have a binder for everything. Nice. That's actually something that I do. I keep all of my things organized. So I put that binder together in like 15 minutes the night before reunion and just, you know, put every tab in there and took all my paperwork, printed it out, put it inside the binder. And I said, all right, cool. You're not going to come at me with lies because right. I have actual receipts right here. Right. Right. So, right. You was so, not playing. Wait, 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 wait. Can I tell you Giselle's face? <laughs> stuck. When you stuck. hit her and, and she don't get stuck. Okay. She don't get stuck. So when you hit her with that and then hit her about Jamal not being behind her. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, girl, I was on the couch. I wish I had popcorn because I would have been like, Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I was like, OK, like you, you, you just you just somebody got called her the Grinch that stole Christmas. <laughs> right. Right. So, Monique, what uh, what were some of your challenges as far as trying to balance out the reality show and then getting your personal life going because I know you have product as well. So what was your challenges for that? Uh, balancing personal life and balancing filming and all of those different things was very difficult. I, for a while, I was the only person on the cast that had young children. So yeah. before yeah. Ashley had um, baby Dean, you know, I had Christopher and Milani and then Chase when Milani was born, um, I think I started filming when she was about six, seven, eight months. That was my first season. So nobody had that experience. And I was being asked to go here, there, and the other. I didn't have a nanny at the time. I didn't have any help outside of me, my husband, and my cousin who would come in town and help us. But it forced me to have to learn how to really delegate and really depend on other people when I've always been a person that's very hands-on. I didn't have a nanny. I didn't, like I, I raised my kids. I'm very hands-on with my kids. So that was very mm -hmm. challenging for me. Um, and they couldn't really relate or understand because a lot of them who had children, they were, they were grown enough to watch themselves. If you're asking me to go film a scene for three hours, I have to have somebody watch my kids. If my husband's busy coaching or if he's not home, what do I do? That right. alone in itself was very stressful because I wasn't going to leave my kids with somebody who I don't know or don't trust. Right. 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 Yeah. And so how did you come up with the not for lazy moms? Because that's I, I, I love it. I mean, I know you're doing the oils now. You're doing a podcast. And so how did that come about? Could you please tell the audience? Because that's a major breakthrough, too, especially yeah. coming up with something at that magnitude during filming with your kids, you know, being a new mom, being a wife, you got to cook, you got to, you know, still make sure you're laying it down in the bedroom. And now Ooh. you didn't, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, and, and now, and, and, you know, you're married to an athlete, you know, yeah. so they are spoiled brats and they expect everything to go their way. So how were you able to balance all of that too, along with, you know, the not for lazy moms? Oh my goodness. It was such a juggle. So not for lazy moms is something I actually started prior to the show. Okay. It started because I had my first child and I would use a lot of natural remedies. So I had friends who would hit me up and say, Hey, what do I use for this? Or my infant has a stuffy nose. He's not breathing good. What can I use for that? I'm like, Oh, cut up an onion, sit it on a plate, put it near his crib and it'll open up his airways. Oh, wow. It was stuff that my great grandmother has taught me that mm -hmm. I passed on to other people. One of my friends said, you just need to create a website or some type of blog or something where you can just post all your natural remedies so I don't have to keep sharing your number with everybody. Right. And that's what I did. Not For Lazy Mom started as a Facebook page. And then it turned into a website and now a podcast. Now we have the YouTube channel. So it's been great. And it's all about women sharing their tips and tricks for how to get by, how to maintain yourself, how to balance, mm -hmm. and letting people know that you're struggling. I'm struggling. Let's struggle together. And right. let's share 
different little techniques that we use to get by. And that's how it began. Um, as far as juggling, being married, having children, businesses launching and doing the show, it's very difficult, especially because my husband was so accustomed to me doing everything for him, making sure that he's good. So now it forced him to step outside of his comfort zone and take more of a role of just being very proactive, which he wasn't used to because he looked at me to do it. Right, so right. every right. year was a different challenge. And we got to the point where we finally found that balance and we were able to just be a team and work together. And that's how we are now. And that's why he's my co-host of the Not For Lazy Moms podcast. Right. So we try to do things together and then we share that story with, with other people. Well, that is a major breakthrough, girl. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is especially being because that's a that's a huge transition because if you're going if, if and for him and for you, because it's going from now you're in the spotlight. Right now, all the attention is on you and he has to be a big support system, which I will mm -hmm. say a lot of men, they don't know how to transition. And sometimes a lot of women get lost and like, OK, well, it's just all about my man. So, you know, let me just mm -hmm. keep you know, putting stuff for me on the back burner. So I commend both of you for being able to make that major breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Like that's, yeah, of course. It's very inspiring. It and took a lot of conversation. I mean, we talk each other into a hole yeah. and we would just say, let's keep the communication open. If I felt as though he's doing a lot, mm -hmm. but I'm like, you're doing a lot, but you're still not doing enough. Right. And I would have to figure out the way to gently say that to him where he doesn't feel like as a man, I'm like, oh, you're doing it all wrong. You're right. doing everything wrong. So it's all about delivery. It's all about having those conversations, those tough conversations that you really don't want to have right. are the ones that you have to have. Right. And Open communication. Mm -hmm. And I, I, noticed, I noticed, Monique, you said uh, your great grandmother or a grandmother taught you all those old school remedies. And yeah. that would just all make sense because your spirit is, is I can see where your spirit come from. You got that old soul. And so for what you just said to your husband, it's a way to say everything. Right. Versus somebody just trying to say, no, you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. Well, you constantly asking somebody to do something that they're not used to doing. They make the effort to do it. And then you turn around and criticize them for doing it. Right. Which means now they don't want to do it at all. So it just takes wisdom and that old soul to have an understanding of, yeah, that, he's not doing it right, but he took time out to try to do it. So let me yeah. see how can I say it to get him to do it the right way mm -hmm. without being offended. So I can see that old school, old spirit in you. And that's what we're missing in this generation today, them old souls and them old spirits. So that's what we need. Well, we missing the grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> The grandmas, the grandmas is, are gone. <laughs> the grandmas is out clubbing. Right, they twenty years old. Yeah. <laughs> my, so. my great grandmother, um, she actually she passed away when my daughter when I was pregnant with my daughter. Okay. And my daughter all the time. I feel like my great grandmother's spirit just transferred right to her. I was Aww. still caring for her when I went to the funeral mm -hmm. to the point where my daughter, who is five, she complains about her legs. She'll say, mommy, my legs, my circulation, which is so crazy to me because that was the one thing my great grandmother always talked about my entire life. She would be like, I, I would call her and say, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. But you know, my legs, and she'll just start like rubbing on her legs. You know, my legs, the circulation is just, you know, mm -hmm. I just need to figure out how I can get better circulation in my legs. So my five-year-old says that and it creeps <laughs> me out, but it makes me feel good at the same time because I'm like, my grandmother is here. <laughs> right, right. She right Absolutely. inside Milani. Absolutely. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> and that's your peace of mind and confirmation that she's in an amazing place. So that's, yeah. that's what the most high is doing for you at that moment. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> And so now you have a lot of other things going on that you've been able to break through what you went through and continue to build your business and keep thriving. So let's talk about your um, essential oils. I know you just launched a line of essential oil. And by the way, I will be picking mine up just to let you know, because I do use essential oils. I have a diffuser. So I put them in my diffuser. So I definitely will be supporting you and getting me some oils and getting some for a few of my friends too. So let's jump into these oils. Yes, Mila Eve Essentials is my new essential oils and products line. So we have essential oils and other products like bath salts. We have carrier oils mm -hmm. and we have a lot of new products that we'll be launching in the next few months as well. I started it because 
honestly, the feedback that I kept getting from the fans and viewers of the Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay. They kept saying, we're watching you on the show and we love that you use essential oils. Right. We want to buy your oils. And I said, well, I don't have my oils. Well, you need to get some. <laughs> <laughs> right. I went, on a, I went on a journey and actually a part of that was a part of season three of the Real Housewives of Potomac. Yep. We went to France. Yep. To a distillery. We learned the whole process and that was life changing for me. And I said, you know what? I can do this. So I went on a whole mission to, to make this come to pass and it did. And my oils are 100% pure chemical free, mm -hmm. therapeutic essential oils. They are top notch quality, but I offer them at a price that is affordable right. for people. So that was my main concern is that I want people who are middle class, whatever class, I want everybody to be able to afford essential oils because it really is life changing. It, it definitely is. Um, I, I know when, when I use them and now I know Memphis, you actually use them too in your diffuser. I had walked into his place and I saw him with the diffuser and the oils. I was like, oh. Actually, I ordered mine from Monique mentally. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some for, for Memphis and some for Melvin and some for my producer, Lori. I like, oh. I'm, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of um, your oils for people because, like I said, I really am a, a fan. I use oils every day. I start my morning off burning my Palo Santo, my sage, and I put my diffuser on with my oils. So, I mean, it'll cause your allergies to act up. But other than that, it's <laughs> pretty good. I would definitely say um, I am on a mission to have more men use essential oils mm -hmm. because they act, some people think that, oh, that's for women. There are so many scents that are great for anybody. Right. I actually have a kit. So what I do is I put together combinations of oils and I turn it into a kit so that I can give you instruction on exactly how to use it. I give you recipes. Oh, and we cool. actually have a new kit. It's called Calm Men Sense. Okay. Specifically for men. Nice. It's about, um, you know, helping so that they don't get the ingrown hairs after they shave. Mm -hmm. uh, the combinations you can create are for your diffuser. They can be used as a cologne. They boost your, your mindset so that you feel good. Some of them are libido boosters. Not that some of the men need it. Because okay. I swear that we need it more than the men do sometimes. But <laughs> so that's in there too. And we have kits for uh, women that are crafted for women as well with libido boosters and all that type of stuff. So we have kits for everything. If you don't know where to start, then we give you a nice little starting place and we tell you how to apply and how to use them. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm ordering that today. Mm -hmm. So common sense for the men. Mm -hmm. And then what, yes. what should I get? You should get, there's a kit called the Flirty Kit. The Flirty? And then, yes, the Flirty Kit. She's and very creative with your nicknames of all the stuff. I love it. <laughs> I love you. I love your little nickname <laughs> for yes, shows, yes. her books, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually have a sale going and these are part of my Valentine's Day collections. So we have a for him, for her, for us. Okay. Oh, nice. It is the lover's lane. And that one has like our, we have a new massage oil. Okay. It has some aphrodisiacs in it. Oh. So oh. <laughs> that movie coming back, the massage some oil is freaky called oils. <laughs> 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 well, I don't need that right about now. I'm celibate. Mm -hmm. so. You're going to have to <laughs> I don't slowly need walk me into the oil <laughs> thing. I'm a, we could get some from Mel. He's right now, I believe he's the only one that's in a relationship right now. Me and Memphis, <laughs> yeah, we single. We, we we single. Well, you know, I'm celibate. I'm, I'm, I'm celibate. Yeah, I'm celibate Mentally. just I'm, out I'm, here. I will send y'all some extra. I'm celibate, too. 30 kids for Tori. <laughs> Memphis, you'll get the common sense. Okay. And then Melvin, you get the lover's lane. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay I'm, I'm writing that down. Okay. Lover's, lover's lane. lane and so, flirty. So, Monique, uh, not to get off your product, but uh, for our listeners, what is a testimony that you would like to share to inspire our listeners? You know what I mean? What's something that you felt like you maybe – was not going to make it you couldn't get on your feet you couldn't look up to the heavens but that testimony that you can share with people that can really inspire them to know that they can keep their head up and they can keep moving forward what's something you would like to share to our listeners an amazing well, breakthrough story yes well i can give you the one that everybody has pretty much seen even play out on the show and i think the the way that i really sum this up is you tell your story mm -hmm. okay. never let a person define you 
I don't care who it is. Whatever you know to be the truth, you tell your truth. There is power in you telling your truth and sticking with what you know is true about yourself, not allowing one moment of bad judgment define you as a whole person. Right. And when people try to gaslight you and tell you that you are wrong, just know that God knows. Right. And eventually the truth always has a way of being revealed. And that was probably my biggest breakthrough moment is that when this time happened after the altercation and we're filming this show, I don't think people understand the magnitude of the gaslighting that was being placed onto me. I knew of what happened. I mm -hmm. said everything from point A to point Z. And I was told over and over by many people behind the scenes and cast that what I was saying did not happen. That could have broke me mentally. Mm -hmm. I went and saw a therapist. I spoke to two different therapists and I said, I need to figure this out because this is what I know went down. And everybody's telling me it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. For over a year, I was told it didn't happen. Even in my phone calls with execs, even when the season was about to air a year later, I was still being told that everything I said didn't happen. And then you get to the second part of the reunion. And then they finally show footage right. that backs up everything I had been saying. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Why would you hold on to that? Why would you do that to me? Why would you try to do that to me mentally to tear me down? Mm -hmm. What mission are you on that you would hold back video footage mm -hmm. that you know proves what I've been saying mm -hmm. in order to do what? To, to tell a show on a TV? To right. tell a story? Ratings. What? It's like <laughs> I get the ratings and I get that, but I'm still a person. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just, I'm thankful that I stuck to my guns. So I just say to people, don't let anybody define you. Don't let anybody tell you that you are something other than what you are. Because at the end of the day, what they wanted was for me to be the villain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the for villain. sure. And at the end of the day, after that part three of the reunion aired, everybody was coming after the real villains. Yeah, they were. <laughs> and trolling everybody's account who were the real villains behind so, the scene and in front of the scene. So right, where right. are you now with the show? I know I've heard that you weren't coming back. Is there any hope for you coming back in the future? Please come never, back. I would never be back on that show. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh I'm not God. watching. Well, come to Beverly Hills and get on the Beverly Hills show with Garcelle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've had enough and a lot of my... I mean, the, the, the border, the, the boundaries were just crossed over and over again. And, and I know you all saw the last part of the reunion. There was a huge incident that happened where there was a cast member who was on a mission to try to tear apart my family and my marriage yeah. to the point where she even went after my child, yeah. my baby, to, to paint a picture as if my husband wasn't the father of my child. That yeah. is crazy. He, he, talked about this at the reunion because I wanted all of them to be held accountable. Candace went on her Instagram live and told the whole story. There was this whole plot. She talked about oh, it. That. It came out of her mouth. Okay. And my husband then went live on our Instagram account. This was last August. We went live on my Instagram account and we went live to basically respond to what Candace had said. They show me and my husband's response on the reunion, but they never showed why we were, what we were responding to, which was Candace's live. If you're going to show one, you got to show the other part. So why do you, you think know? that happened? What happened with your relationship behind the scenes that they kind of cornered you? Like, why did they... Jealous. It's insane. I, I was live on my T with Monique YouTube channel last night saying the same thing. I said, I don't know right. who is out for me, I'm like, I show up on time. I, I'm very respectful to everybody from the camera people to the crew to the execs, everybody. I'm like, I don't understand why they're coming for me so hard. Can I and, tell you? Can yeah. I jump in real quick? Because there's something special about you. And and from the moment I started watching, and like like I told you, even when I did my interview with you, I was like, I want to know more about this woman. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so 
I can see where, you know, how you carry yourself, how you're charismatic, you're beautiful, you have a blessed family, mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not like, oh my God, look at my life. You know, you don't walk around like that. You're very humble too. So people who don't have what you have, and I ain't going to say no names, but I could see, uh, you know, the green eyed monsters when, when I could see it, but people who don't have what you have and want what you have, they can be jealous and they can start planting different seeds. You know, people will plant seeds. So, oh, yeah. and this is just from the outside looking in. So I can tell you why they're coming for you. And you'll be surprised how many other people, men too, that can start to be jealous of what you have. Because I know that in, in the position that I'm in, being associated who with who my ex-husband is and what I've been through. And I would be like, I don't understand. Like, I'm good to people. I have this. But, you know, that when they want what you have, they will come after you and, and plant those seeds. So just know you're special and, you know, you're a beautiful person. And it's the, the higher you get, the more it's going to continue to happen. This, this is just, you know, this just mm -hmm. a small surface right here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I want to add on to that. And that's part of being favor. Right. You know, when, when God show you favor, people would test you. Remember, they came out to Jesus and he didn't do nothing to them. Right. And so who are we to be spared? So when you favor and your confidence and the gift and talents that God gave you, See, one, the different thing that you brought to the show was naturally being yourself, having your own personality. Mm -hmm. So maybe the exec saw that you was not a character. And so since you're not a character that we can control or we can lead into doing things point. that she don't want to do, then they turned around and said, okay, well, we got to make her a villain. Yeah. We got to make her the outcast. We got to turn everybody against her, but no weapon formed against you should prosper. And so Amen. what you did was you said, you know what? I'm going to continue to be me. I'm mm -hmm. going to continue to be who I am. I'm not going to be the character that y'all trying to encourage me to be or, or try to cut out a cardboard box and make me be this person. I'm going to continue to be me. And so what they tried to do was minimize your character. Was, and, and it didn't work. Mm -mm. And it ended up backfiring on you. Anytime you have to go see therapists and, and people are continuing to tell you something didn't happen that you know it happened. Right. Mm -hmm. That's somebody that's saying, I'm not interested in your emotions. I'm not interested in your feelings. I'm interested in making you be what well, I need you to you be, be. Yep. for <laughs> this show. But you didn't break down. You uh, you stayed strong. You stood on your two feet. And what happened was, since you stayed yourself and since you stayed true to yourself, and that's where your grandmama came in. That's where them old souls and them old spirits came in. That You said, you know what? I know what I saw. I know what I experienced. And the truth don't change. Mm -hmm. yep. Lies do, but the truth don't change. And you stood by your guns. And we're grateful for the reunion. Because what the reunion did was reveal, like you said, everything that you had already been discussing and saying from the start, the truth came out. The belly of the beast can't hold it for much longer. And God will reveal the truth. Because wherever light is, darkness have to go. Yeah. And so we appreciate yes, you. Yes, yes Memphis. Hey, Bishop. <laughs> we getting a good old sermon today, ain't we? He <laughs> just had his own big breakthrough okay. on the show. Let me find out you got a calling with the Lord. <laughs> uh -huh. well, I, I never got a call. Shining down on that yeah. head today. <laughs> that was a whole word, and I received every bit of it. Yeah, and absolutely. I, and it's funny because me and my husband sit back and we talk. And he's actually said this for a while. And he said, you know what? You're, he said, you can't be tamed. Yeah. He said, you've never been a person who can be controlled. Right. And he mm -hmm. said, that's the issue with you mm -hmm. for other people who want right. to control you. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. if they can't control you, they'll tear you down. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. Girl. See, this is Catch what I learned. Spirits. <laughs> you, what I learned is about being around other people that's uh, gifted and talented. If they feel like you're more gifted and talented than them, or if they feel intimidated by you, they will want you to minimize yourself so they don't feel insecure. Right. And so people with gifts and talents, they'll find themselves, just like Tori, for example. Tori, didn't, Tori manifests success in her life. She didn't know a divorce or Kevin or this and that. She continued to individually manifest success in her life. Mm -hmm. So... When things start manifesting and things start happening for, of course, everybody will give Kevin the credit, but they don't know what Tori went through to and manifest to get <laughs> what she want. But now that she got what she have, she had to go around other young ladies. And I've seen her do it without her knowing that she do it. It's her first time hearing me say this. I've seen her minimize her personality just so the other ladies can be comfortable. Mm -hmm. But God did not give us gifts and talents and personalities to hide behind. 
just so other people can feel good. And for the people who take time out to give you positive criticism, they hiding behind it. Those are basically people who are taking jabs at you. The only person who can give you positive criticism is somebody that says positive things about you. But if you don't say nothing positive about me, then you can't give me no positive criticism right. because what you're doing is hiding behind that to give me a jab. So stop and moving forward with all your gifts and talent and all of us in this room. Stop minimizing our gifts and talents so other people don't feel insecure around us. If they feel insecure around us, that's their issue. Right. That's their problem. We have to walk into the glory that God called us for. We have to walk into the purpose that we have on our life and stop trying to be concerned with how this other person feels. And Tori does that a lot with, a, no bunch of, with a bunch of girls Not where no she was more. trying to <laughs> bring herself down just so they can feel good. But those same people going to talk about you regardless, so it yeah. don't make a difference. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, we had several breakthrough moments. So how's your relationship with the rest of the girls in the cast? Who are you? Are you still in touch with anybody? Anything? The, Karen? Yeah, Karen. Okay. Karen, I love Karen. I Karen do too. So, oh, nice. And, and I love Ashley too. I, I don't, I, I actually love the three of y'all. I mean, I really do. And I'm not just saying this because you said it, like Melvin, you know, yeah. when I was sitting there on the couch watching, I mean, I, I do feel a little bad for Ashley, but I still love Ashley and I, and I do still love Karen. And of yeah. course, you know, I love you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I remember Melvin was saying earlier before we brought you on air, what was you saying, Melvin? Well, if she go lead the show, that was the best way to lead. That was the right. best. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It was the best way to leave. Like you were snatched from head to toe. <laughs> You read everybody for Phil. Right. And, <laughs> and you said, all right. You I'm said done. stage left. I'm, I'm not coming back. <laughs> stage left. You know, what's very interesting is that in my mind, I thought they were going to fire me. Honestly. So when I prepared myself for the reunion, I said, I am going all balls out. Right, <laughs> yes. I'm going to give this my all because if it is my last show, right. it's going to be a good one. Yes, it and is. And I right. was like determined. I'm going to read everybody. I'm not holding back. Nope. I don't care how you feel about it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I what I feel. And if you come for me, I got a whole binder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> that sounds like something else would have <laughs> It's definitely something I would do. I related to that very, very well because I am like you, Monique. I put up with so many things and people trust me and they tell me all kinds of things and I know a lot of things. But when you put me in a position like that, when you provoke me, what else am I to do but let you know where you really are in life? Right. You know, as a person. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Monique, Monique, we really appreciate you timing in. Uh, for our listeners, can you tell them all your handles where they can follow you at and find you at and get your product and, and et cetera? Yes. So you can find me on Instagram at uh, Mrs. Monique Samuels. Um, my YouTube channel is Tea with Monique. Uh, I have my Twitter, which is I am Mrs. Samuels. And make sure you follow all my platforms because I'm going to be releasing something very special really soon. And it's called Binder Time Stories. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Yes, so yes. Really good. Everybody wanted me to release all the receipts, and I had to sit back and figure out a creative way to do it. Right. And one of the things I enjoyed as a child growing up was story time. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, why don't we have story time for adults with a little tea and a little shade? <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love it. it. Yes. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I just want to say thank you once again for coming on Breaking Through with Tori today. You have been amazing. I love your spirit. I, I love your family. I love what you got going on. I wish you much continued success. Keep pushing. Keep breaking through. And don't let nobody stop you. We love you, Monique. We love you, Monique. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tell Chris we're going to play a little one-on-one -on -one when I get there. <laughs> we're going to play some football when I get to town. <laughs> All right. So, guys, um, that was a great episode. That was episode. a great yeah. That was amazing. That was Absolutely. We enjoyed her. Yeah. yeah. And and I just want to say, um, is there any breaking through story that you guys want to tell this week? Something quick? A quick wrap-up? Um. If not, I know we had, we usually say like a little. Yeah. Do you, do you have a, um, um, I, 
I would say to people that if you are about that life, you have to 100% be about that life. You cannot blabber off at the mouth, get in people's face, and not be able to handle what's going to come next. That's just how I see it. I think it. that was for Candace. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think, I don't promote violence, violence. or anything like that, mm -hmm. but... I know the how bear. these shows work, and I know, I know when space is invaded, things can go left. Yeah. Yes. So, basically, every action comes with a consequence. With the consequence. Yes. I like to tell the people, man, remember this: high vibration and positive energy. You are what you think. If you think negative, negative come. You think positive, positive come. So keep your mindset in a positive place and think at a high frequency level, so you can continue to move forward, man. Follow my Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok at Memphis Will by itself. That's M E M P H I S W I L L. Or follow my Instagram and Twitter at The Memphis Will. That's T H E M E M P H I S W I L L. Monday through Thursday, I'm live on Instagram at 7 o'clock Pacific time. High vibration, uh, positive energy. God says, so it is so. I said something quick. <laughs> <laughs> It <laughs> gave us a whole nother ministry. <laughs> and I just want to tell the people. Yellow okay, God, yellow God. Yellow God. Oh, yellow God. <laughs> I just want to tell the people, be be quick, okay, with what you're going to say. No. Okay, that failed. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, I just want to say once again, y'all, always um, stay in a positive mindset. Do not let people stop you from reaching your goals. You will be tested in life, but you have to break through. I I didn't been tested for the last 20 something years. I was tested when I first got hit by a car when I was six. I started getting tested. Mm. So you're going to have many tests in life. And just remember, the thing is to pass them. And once you learn the lesson, please don't keep repeating the same damn mistake over and over again. Mm. Break through, okay? <laughs> Thank you for tuning into another episode of Breaking Through. We appreciate spending time with you. And uh, go celebrate and have your own breakthrough. All right, people? This is Tori Hart, and I'm out. Peace. Peace out. Peace out.